All right, we're starting the security working group meeting for September 2022. Um, Kali, please go ahead. Actually, sorry, before we start, uh, let's approve the meeting minutes from July 12, which are linked on the agenda. I'll share the, share the agenda on the chat as well. So we get that out of the way. And if um, everyone present is okay with that, then we approve the meeting minutes. Okay, sorry, go ahead, Kali. Yeah, so we are not many many people on the call, so maybe I will bring this up in matrix or or in a next meeting. But there are a couple of couple of items that uh, I wanted to kind of bring up here. One one is that we've been working with Eprosima uh, the past half a year, I guess, um, with some additions or enhancements for the fast DDS, and um, I think we are quite close to finalize it and uh, the enhancement is pretty much to kind of enable oh hi roger hi roger hello hello so um maybe i start over so <laughs> the first uh, last few months we've been working with eprosima um to enhance the fast dds a little bit um and the idea is to kind of add support for multi-layer networks when ROS security features are enabled. And so, so by design, it seems that the ROS and, and DDS hasn't been really designed to work uh, in multi-tier network or, or multi-layer network. So it's, it's designed to pretty much work on a flat structure, but in our drone use case that I have explained here in the working group a few times, we have like all very, very many networks. It's like a network of networks. And for that, um, we've been working with Eprosima to kind of add this support. So both discovery and, and the actual communication and ROS2 traffic should work when we have, uh, multiple different networks. So we have the local virtual LAN, then we have Wi-Fi, we have LTE um, and multiple drones. So everything is multiplied and everything wants to, uh, we want to kind of communicate seamlessly uh, between those different networks in the same ROS2 network, at least virtually. So I think that uh, I will talk with Eprosima, uh, but I think maybe in the next working group meeting, we could have some kind of presentation about it, uh, or if not next in November, but um, um, I think uh, we are doing the final tests with it. So it's, it's more or less ready. Uh, so this was just basically to give some kind of update and maybe add item to the next next call agenda. Um, <clears throat> then the other thing is that uh, uh, we are thinking of rewriting all our ROS2 nodes in our project. And the actual idea there is to move to memory safe languages. And I was just wondering if if anybody in the working group or has been writing ROS2 nodes with, let's say, Rust or Go, well, our Google memory safe uh, languages, uh, or if you are aware of any kind of studies or research about uh, using ROS2 with those, those language environments. Uh, it seems that most of the uh, community is still using uh, C, C++ and well, Python. Uh, so this is just something to, that, yeah, sorry, Roger, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I was just to say, I can't speak to personal experience on that front, but uh, one of the guys that works on my team, uh, Jacob Hassel, has been doing a lot of work with ROS2 and Rust. Uh, he's been on an actual ROS2 Rust working group uh, for a while now. Uh, so I think he probably would be a good resource to get in touch with and you know be able to bounce ideas around. That would be very nice. Uh, could you maybe write his name in a, in a chat? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can uh, get uh, some links or something where he's had some contributions before so you can get in touch with him. Oh, brilliant. That would be really good. Try 
trying to get to his actual like GitHub profile or something, but uh, he's not going as easily as I would like. So I'm going to just grab this first. It's like it's actually okay. Oh, maybe I can do it this way. Um, one second. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so first I'm going to drop over here. Uh, this is just a GitHub uh, link to his user profile. Uh, that is Jacob Hasseld uh, with BCS. Um, and I can separately go grab his email address to send to you, to give to you. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. Thanks a lot. If it would actually let me search. There we go. <laughs> Actually, he just sent something to me like five minutes ago. I should be able to describe that. There we go. All right. There is uh, some email information um, so that you can reach out to him. Um, but like I said, he, he has been a very big proponent of Rust. Um, and has been active in trying to move ROS to Rust compatibility forward. So, you know, I think that would be a great connection to make. Um, he definitely has some opinions on things. So if you're looking for opinions, he will be happy to share them. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. That's what I'm looking for, actually. <laughs> it actually was interesting because, um, and this is actually one thing I was kind of thinking would be interesting to talk about with this group. I've heard some noise from the, um, ROS2 steering committee about possibly looking at Xeno as being a uh, new middleware option. And he actually was looking at that because I believe it is implemented in Rust. Um, and he had a couple of concerns about some of their implementations where there was some unsafe memory operations happening. But I know there also was kind of a larger question about whether, you know, SROS2 actually would even be possible on a Xeno based platform. That's interesting. So it'd be one of the <clears throat> one of the middle layers to be added uh, to kind of cycle uh, between the versions, if I understood correctly. Is that like uh, competing implementation to fast EDS and so on? Basically, yeah. Now you know, it's, I don't know a whole lot about it, um, and I was not personally part of those discussions. So it's just kind of what I'm hearing is third hand. But yeah, it sounded like you know. Some of the um, senior steering committee members were kind of saying, you know, gee, it sure seems like a lot of people don't really like DDS and it's hampering us in a variety of ways, especially with respect to discovery. So maybe we should consider just saying, you know what, never mind about DDS, let's go with Xeno and maybe that'll make everybody happy. But then in looking at the actual, you know, implementation and documentation for Xeno, there was very little in the way of security support in there, which me, you know, which would be a big concern if there was any intent to have Xeno support for SROS. Yeah, that's that's interesting. It security perspective, that's very interesting change. Um, we've been quite committed in our project to work with fast EDS. Um, previously, Eprosima implemented this PKS 11 support. <clears throat> according to the DDS specification, which was one project we did last year with them. And now we've been working to kind of, I, I don't know if we are facing the same discovery issue, uh, what you referred to, but but similar similarly, like we have had a problem with discovery with this flat uh, network design uh, principle. Yeah, um, like my, my understanding is just basically that the more nodes you have, the worse the discovery penalty gets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. But yeah, like so I said, it, it's kind of third hand from my perspective. Um, I'm hoping there's some meeting notes out there that might have a little bit more detail about what was actually discussed, but I haven't dug those up myself. I've just been listening to what the folks who were involved were saying. Yeah. Roscon is going to happen in a month, so let's hope that uh, 
there is some something interesting regarding that. Yeah, but uh, I think that was everything that I had. I had to kind of. I, I didn't really prepare any presentation or anything, or uh, nor added anything to agenda. But I just wanted to bring these two, two things to the table. Okay, great. And feel free to update us on metrics as well. Um, if you learn anything else about this initiative. That's definitely interesting for us, I mean, from a security perspective. I was not aware of that. I did find the TSC minutes, so I'll go ahead and drop those over there. Um, there was a 20 minute discussion on what would it take to build a Xeno um, Ross middleware. TLDR, Xeno has a lot of nice properties that may make it better RMW for those just starting to learn Ross. Open Robotics and Zetascale are looking for contributions and funding to make this happen. To do update at September meeting. But yeah, I think there's a very, very strong question about what the security capabilities of that would be. Uh, there's very, very limited stuff from what I looked at uh, right now. Um, Let's see, I don't, where was that? I'm looking, if you have not seen it before, this is the project's homepage. Yeah, this is new to me, thanks, thanks. I'll have a look. And I believe that basically all it said was that they had uh, support for um, uh, the client verifying that the server was who it claimed to be, and that was about it. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, TLS authentication and user password authentication seems to be the extent of the security-related stuff. That's down in their uh, reference manual. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna I gonna read the spec and see um, see how it looks. <laughs> Looking at these pictures, it actually looks a little bit similar to the NATS. If you know this nuts that IO this. Um, This topologies they they um, show here in the key concepts are quite similar to that. Like they also have those leaves and and clusters. I'm not getting access to the slides that were presented under that point. You the slide deck. Uh, let's see, is this the right? I'm looking, I am looking at one. Um, I'm not sure if it's the right one or not, though. Which link is it you're looking at? Oh, it's under the discussion what would it take to build this in RMW? Ah, there, that deck. Yeah, I do not have access to that one either. Okay, I have requested access, um, but I'll look more into that. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, it sounded very relevant to what's going on here, so. For sure.
yeah, I also requested access to that deck. Let's see, <laughs> may not get approved. All right, do you guys have something else you'd like to discuss, bring up? No, I'm good, thanks. That was the only thing I was uh, bringing to the table today. Great, okay. So on my side, what I added to the agenda is a follow-up discussion from last sesh, last meeting in July about um, collaborating on a very short paper about SROS2, initially targeting the journal of open source software. Um, and Roger, I think you were here in July. Yes, I was a, I was here uh, for that discussion. Okay, so we don't have a lot of progress yet, but um, just wanted to bring it up again and see maybe we can um, distribute some some of the work and sort of get organized and push that through. Yeah, and I would I'd be happy to help out with that, but yeah, after the discussion last time, it sounded like it was kind of a we just need to take a paper that someone already had existed, had already created, cut it down to size, and submit. Um, so I didn't know if there was any good place to jump in and do that. Or if it made more sense for the original author to just take it and run with it. Yeah, what paper do you, do you have in mind? I thought that there was one that was shared uh, during that meeting that actually, you know, was like, hey, we could use this as a basis. And then whenever we looked at what the actual JOSS, you know, submission criteria looked like, they wanted something that was, you know, simpler and smaller than what had already been developed. Maybe I'm misremembering that, though. Um, how many paper candidates were there? And are they somewhere listed in the previous notes, maybe? I'm going back and looking at the minutes now to see if there was anything more specific. You're referring, you're referring to this paper? That may be the one, yes. I'm trying to pull that up to see if it looks like what I remembered. I think that's the one that I was thinking of, yes. And then I think that from, if I thought that the discussion was that um, the JOSS stuff actually was looking for stuff that was even smaller than that was. Yes, let me share requirements again, but uh, we also shared an example last time. Generally, yes, they are just very short papers presenting a piece of open source software that has in some way a research application. So. That's basically it. So what do you think should be our next step with this? Well, I guess, you know, the, the question is, you know, is there something in the existing paper there that would be appropriate to pull over here? Because I don't remember exactly what they were looking for. Uh, I thought the discussion was that it seemed like it was a fairly close match. Uh, if it's not, then yeah, we'd have to figure out what would be an appropriate piece to pull over and is there any existing material to work from or are we having to create something from scratch um yeah there's definitely material from be it from this paper that was published by some of the developers of SRS2. um yeah there, we're definitely not starting from scratch here. I guess the question is, 
is there an interest in the group to push this through? And if so, what the timeline should be? So since it's only a few of us here, maybe that's something to discuss on um, metrics a bit further. Yeah, that might be a better idea, honestly, because it's like I I wouldn't mind, you know, trying to help out and be a part of pulling something together there. I don't know that I've got the hands-on familiarity to come up with a, you know, good quality idea from scratch mm -hmm. on what should go in. Um, Yeah, I'd love to assist. I don't think I can be the primary author, though. Yeah, sort of same same from my side. I'm I'm happy to kind of be involved, but um, yeah, I, I I guess Victor and the guys are, are probably better better to comment on that. So maybe it's better to take it to Matrix. Okay, sounds good. Let's do that. All right, do you guys have anything else today? Not from here. Yeah, I'm good. All right, in that case, I uh, will see you all in Matrix. Continue the conversation. Yep. All right, Thanks. have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you, bye. Bye-bye.